Okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Katrine, and I work for the Center for Teaching, Research, and Learning. Uh, before we get started, I wanted to mention a few things. Captioning is available for this session. To turn on captions, there should be an option at bottom of the screen in the Zoom toolbar that says Show Subtitles. If you do not see it, you may need to click on More to see that option. Also, there will be an anonymous survey posted at the end of the session as a QR code that you can scan with your phone and as a link in the chat. With that being said, I will just turn it over to our presenters. Thank you. Hey, thanks so much. Um, thanks for coming. Uh, my name is Zach. I'm, um, I work in the library in the e-learning support services office, uh, and I am one of our uh, Canvas admins here at American University. Um, that just means I am kind of the Canvas mechanic here. Um, I can get uh, into everything under the hood in Canvas, all the tools, all the settings, things like that. Um, so if you ever had any questions for Canvas, uh, the one you can find. Um, contact information real quick. I'll throw it down in the chat. Well, no, I'll just close the chat. There it is. Email address. Let me grab our phone number because I always forget it, whether it's my extension or the line for everyone. And then I give everyone just my extension. And then and my colleagues getting a call. So I always want to make sure. Okay, cool. This is the right. Awesome. So that is our information. Um, that is for us here at American University. I say at, um, I work remote. I live in Chicago. Um, so I'm not at AU physically, um, but we are within AU. We work for AU, myself and my colleagues who work within AU. Um, here at American University, though, we also have a contract with uh, Canvas, the company, for 24 7 global support from Canvas technical support. Um, I will put their information here as well. It's 24 seven technical support, which is very important this time of year. Um, there's their uh, phone, uh, phone number, that is the faculty phone number. Um, it gets you in a little bit quicker than if you call the student number, uh, and it mostly is just for tracking on there. I used to work at Canvas before I worked here at American University. I should mention that as well, so I know some of the inside stuff at Canvas. Um, but yeah, that is the faculty number, so you can call that number 24-7. Um, it will go specifically to a Canvas technical support representative who uh, is working off of a lot of material that I actually created when I was working over there. Um, I worked in the training department for the new, um, new uh, um, support technician uh, training kind of thing. So I created a lot of material they worked off of, uh, specifically the uh, course import and export content is something I created. Um, so I think they're still using that. Last time I checked with a friend who still works there, they're still using that content. Um, so they should all know what they're doing. Um, the one difference is since they are not with American University, um, they won't be able to answer any specific AU related questions, you know, um, the last day of the term, uh, is it, you know, Wednesday or Thursday and how does that impact Canvas, things like that. Um, that's things that, uh, you know, they may be able to see in our account, it's set at a certain date, but they may not have the kind of associated information with that. And then the only other difference is, um, since we are within the university, um, we are authorized to make any changes to your course that you need without a whole bunch of documentation. Uh, so say for example, you're having trouble with your quiz or an assignment on Canvas, uh, it's going to be due in... 10, 15 minutes, students are going to be submitting or starting their quiz or something like that. Um, if you were to call the Canvas Global Support, they would just need an email from you, from your official email address on file with Canvas over to them. Uh, it would have to, you know, go to their supervisor, get checked by them, and there's a whole bunch of things. Whereas uh, in our case, internally here at American University, uh, if you have any issues like that, you can give us a call, shoot us an email. Hey, there's something wrong with my quiz. Uh, you know, we can fix it for you and say, hey, everything's set now. Come find us when you're done with the quiz and we can walk through what happened there. We have a little bit more um, uh, latitude to kind of make some of those changes on the fly. And then uh, we can kind of circle back around afterwards and go through the why, what happened, things like that. So there are, um, you know, less uh, interruptions to students. And then again, we can meet afterwards. Uh, again, since I am uh, in central time, um, it is a little bit easier for me to stick around late as well. It's not that late to stick around after 5 p.m. Eastern time. You know, it's still pretty early for me. Um, so yeah, with that, I will send two quick links over. Uh, the first one is going to be a link to the Canvas Instructor Guides list. Um, this is an internal document that is maintained by Canvas. Um, it is their operate. It is the standard operating procedures of Canvas, officially both internally 
and externally. So these are updated uh, even before the Canvas technicians, the first level technicians that you call and speak with on the phone. Um, this is updated before they're actually informed of a lot of the changes in Canvas. So this is uh, uh, maintained by uh, half engineers and half, um, they're called the product team that manage uh, Canvas the product uh, at Canvas the company. Um, so they maintain this. So this is always going to be accurate. So if you are wondering how to do something with the calendar, how to add an assignment from the calendar, um, I wouldn't recommend doing that. It, it's just not a great way to do it. But this is how you can do it. You can see here there's a little blue box at the top with just some things to consider. You know, um, uh, currently assignments added from the calendar are not validated against course term start and end dates. That's, you know, one thing to keep in mind if you're doing this. That's usually what's going to be up in this blue section at the top. So if you're having an issue with something, like say, for example, you're having an issue with an assignment you created from a calendar, Maybe it's even uh, the uh, start and end dates aren't being validated uh, against the course term or course or term for this assignment that you created from the calendar. Um, but this is where you'll find that information, you know, the kind of specific things. Hey, discussions doesn't work the third Tuesday of February. It's weird stuff like that. Not something like that. But something like that. Um, this is where you'll find this. So in the blue is where you'll see a lot of the kind of pertinent information for little weird things that you may not think of, first of all. Uh, but once you scroll down from there, um, you'll see a very well thought out um, and clearly um, clearly explained both visually and textually um, how to do these things step by step one two three four five they label all of them um, so there's going to be a page like this for every function you can think of within canvas you can see how expansive it is it is very long <laughs> um, but over here there's kind of you know um, the, the subjects that you can go to to find specific things um, so I threw that in the chat over there um, this is going to be um, oh I should be sharing my screen also that would probably be helpful not just telling you what I'm doing but also showing. There we are. Sorry about that. Um, so here, I'll scroll up to the top again. This is the Canvas Instructor's Guide page um, that I just dropped in the chat there. Um, we have our big list of everything you can think of within Canvas, uh, every single tool. Uh, and like I mentioned here, when you click on a specific item, the blue section at the top are the uh, kind of things to consider, um, items of note, that kind of thing. I think it used to be called items of note or something like that. They took the title out a while ago. Um, to my dismay. Uh, if I can hide floating meeting controls, there we go. Um, so this is the first link I always uh, recommend uh, for instructors to kind of bookmark. Uh, always kind of keep in mind if you're having any questions about a tool, little things, hey, uh, this isn't exactly how I remember it, something like that. This is a great place to start to check for those uh, and for answers to those questions, I should say. Uh, and the next one here I'm going to drop over is the Canvas Best Practices page. Um, I guess maybe this should have been posted before the other one. Um, this is kind of just a general getting started with Canvas uh, information. If it's the first time you, you, you've you used Canvas, um, just kind of the best way to get started. Uh, browser versions, updating your computer, things like that, um, different errors that you may encounter the first time you're logging into Canvas, um, particular things like that, internet speed, stuff like that, is all going to be in this document. Um, and it's going to also have at the bottom here kind of a very, very, very uh, <laughs> high level overview uh, of kind of, you know, getting into your course, getting it published uh, for student access and things like that. Um, so again, just a very high level um, kind of introduction to Canvas here. Chat um, over here, then I'll hide meeting controls. All right, and the Canvas best, best practices we got. Let me close this, I'm done checking that. All right, so we are ready to get into Canvas. Um, so what we can see here is just going to be the view of a Canvas course uh, when you first go into your course. If there's no content that are in any of your courses, if you're not being kind of uh, handed over a course, if you're not being added to an existing course, things like that, uh, this is the view we will see. Uh, that being said, things won't stay like this very long. As we start adding things, it will start filling up the course um, and filling up content. Um, but before we get to our course, uh, we do need to kind of take a bit of a step back into Canvas a little bit um, and see some of our tools. Um, and the first place I'd like to start with that is going to be this blue bar over here. This is going to be called the Global Navigation Bar within Canvas. And it's called that because no matter where you go within Canvas, you're still going to see this bar. If I go into Files, Discussions, again, it's very empty. There's nothing in here yet. Uh, this is an intentionally reset course that is empty. You can see this blue bar with all of these options. And I should also say, some of these you will not see. Admin, um, uh, some of you may not see comments. Um, so you may not see all of them, but you will see most of them here. Um, but as you can see, no matter where you go, you will still see this global navigation bar. Um, 
which differs from the course navigation bar, the kind of blue background versus the white background with blue text. Um, the course navigation bar, as you can see, um, has more course specific items, announcements, assignments, discussions, and these are all within my course titled Sandbox Z Shift and Um So you can see here the delineation between the global navigation bar, which is going to be Canvas account specific things versus the course navigation bar over here, which is going to be course specific things. Um, so we'll go through these real quick and we'll just stop on each one for just a moment. Um, so first is going to be account. If we click on this one, very obviously is going to be a lot of your um, account settings, including settings specifically, uh, but notifications, profile, files, settings, shared content, ignore folio entirely, just about uh, photo roster, QR for mobile login, and ignore that as well, and global announcements. These are going to be all your you know, generic account specific type things specific to you. No notifications are going to be notifications for your account um, just for you specifically, rather than not for any course or anything like that. Profile, same thing. If you want to put some information up about you, there's a little text box where you can type some about me information and upload a photo like this beautiful photo here. Files, these are going to be your user files. So things that you would just like to upload uh, just to a place that is only accessible by you as, as a user, just your account. Um, this is where we can upload those items. It's just a very basic file storage page. You can see here I have uh, my different courses listed over here, and then within them you can see the different files that I have added to that course. Um, if we continue going down the settings page here, we won't find a ton of things here that we'll use very often. Um, Probably most commonly is just going to be time zone, um, at least for me specifically not being in Eastern time. Um, this is going to be just as far as things display to you. So it won't change how the course is run. You know, uh, if your course is operated out of DC and you live in uh, uh, Denver on mountain time, uh, for example, you can change the time zone to mountain time for you and it will display everything. Uh, it will display all of the timed items in your course um, in mountain time. So, you know, uh, 2 p.m. Eastern will be uh, 12 p.m. mountain time, things like that. But it won't change the course specifically and how things display to users. Um, once we get into the course itself in the settings page for the course, it has its own time zone for the course itself. So if your course is being operated from uh, St. Louis, Missouri, for whatever reason, you can change the time to central time so that it shows as central time within the course. Um, there won't be too many other things here. Down at the bottom under feature options, these are usually going to be like newer things that Canvas is testing out or is just uh, like it sounds a feature option, something you can turn on but isn't required and doesn't really fundamentally change the experience of students within Canvas, but just rather, uh, you know, the most common one is going to be high contrast UI, UI just standing for user interface. Um, so this is going to be most commonly used for uh, people with visual impairments um, that sometimes have trouble finding smaller buttons or what thing, uh, um, what content within the course is a uh, hyperlinked or underlined or in a different color for users that may have um, uh, visual impairments relating to color um, uh, um, perception. Um, that is something that they, um, uh, that student might consider turning on just to make things a little bit easier to um, kind of locate on the page what things are clickable, what things aren't, um, things like that. Um, from what I um, recall from when I worked with the accessibility coordinator when I was working at Canvas, um, all of the changes in the high contrast UI are pretty standard across the board for how most web pages will identify things um, to users who have visual impairments. Um, so in most cases, uh, users who are familiar with using um, accommodations for visual impairments, such as a high contrast UI, will be familiar with the changes that are made to this page. Um, if you ever have any questions or students do, you can always direct them out over to us. We can always assist you with that. And then I do believe we also have um, the accessibility team in um, ASAC that can assist us with further um, providing additional tools for students as well. Um, shared content is not going to be a very commonly used item. Um, definitely reach out to us if you have ever, uh, if you ever have, um, uh, any questions about that or using that. Um, it is not going to be what I would recommend to be the best way to share content between instructors, but it is an option. Um, long story short, if another instructor sends you some content through Canvas, nine times out of 10, we'll find it here in this, well, sorry, nine times out of 10, if we can't initially find it in the inbox or elsewhere within Canvas, it's usually gonna be within shared content. Uh, Folio, we'll totally ignore. It is a portfolio type tool within Canvas um, that should have its own training. 
<laughs> the photo raster tool, however, is going to be a fantastic tool. Um, I, however, cannot see too much of it because I don't teach any classes. Um, but if you can teach courses, the photo raster is a fantastic tool to be able to see the official ID photos of the students in your course. So you can get an idea of the faces you'll be seeing on the first day of your courses. Um, so you will enter your username or email here uh, in this box. I think it lets me enter my information, but I don't think it gives me anything. Yeah, there it is. So you will put your information in, it will give you a little drop down that you, where you select your name. Once you select it, since you all are instructors that are teaching courses, it will then give you the option to select a term. You'll select the fall 2024 term, uh, and then it will give you um, options of the sections that you are teaching. Sections just mean the courses that you are teaching. It will give you a list, then you select them, and it will show all your students on there. It does open in a new tab here, as you can see. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. It'll show all the students there. If you're not seeing the students on there for some reason, definitely reach out to us. I believe that's something that we can work with the registrar to get those pushed to the right course. I think it's just back end stuff, making sure the course from the registrar side attaches to this photo roster tool. And then the back end, they all attach and everything goes from A to B. Awesome. Um... Photo roster tool, QR from mobile login. Since AU uses a uh, third party single sign on authentication system, this isn't something we'll be using at all. Um, however, the global announcements tool is something that is fantastic to look for past announcements that have been posted to the entire university um, via Canvas. Usually they will just be, um, we will post something that's like, uh, Welcome to the fall term. If you have questions, here's our information, links, links, links about stuff, other information about welcome to the fall term things. That's usually what will be the global announcements. We do one at the beginning of fall and at the beginning of spring. I think one at the beginning of summer sometimes. Usually at the end of terms as well, you know, end of term is coming up. Here's a link for submitting grades. Here's a link for end of term stuff, other things like that. Um, so those will show up on your dashboard as soon as you log into Canvas. I'll get to the dashboard in a moment. Um, those will show up in your dashboard when you first log into Canvas. Um, they will show up for a certain date period that is set by the creator of the announcement. So usually the first week one, I think is up for a week or two, maybe something like that. Um, you do have the ability to close those down. There's a little X in the upper right-hand corner. If you click that X, it does go away, but we can click on account, click on global announcements here, and we will see the history of them. As you can see here, the current one is about the fall 2024 Canvas virtual workshops um, that you can sign up for. Um, sorry, that you already have signed up for and that you are attending. Um, so this is where we can find just the full list of the current, um, current just meaning the ones that are active that are, you know, set to show between uh, August 15th and September 15th, whatever. Um, and then recent are going to be any of the past ones that have been deleted, but still visibly visible and accessible. Um, so I mentioned that these will show up on the dashboard. Um, when you first log into Canvas, however, um, you will be taken to the dashboard rather than into a specific course. Um, and the dashboard will look a little bit different depending on how many courses you have, um, how those courses have been set up, if a course image has been chosen, what color has been set for the course. Um, additionally, you may also be seeing a different view. You may be seeing the list view um, that will show course content in a different way. Uh, in my opinion, it is not as useful as the card view. Um, so long story short, whenever you log into Canvas first, um, I should say for the first time, you won't have to do this every time, uh, clicking on, oh, not right clicking, clicking on these three dots in the upper right hand corner and selecting card view um, is my recommended um, option for setting up kind of your landing page, your dashboard within Canvas. Um, so like I said, this is where you'll first um, uh, land <laughs> when you reach Canvas. Once you log into your AU portal, when you click on Canvas in the upper right hand corner, um, you will be taken to your dashboard within Canvas, and this is where you'll see all of your courses. Um, for those of you who are teaching courses, which I believe is most of you, um, you will have unpublished courses uh, in most cases, in the vast majority of cases, um, you'll have unpublished courses that have already been assigned to you that you'll be seeing in this unpublished courses section, uh, as opposed to your published courses up at the top. Um, published versus unpublished just means uh, essentially whether or not students have access to the course. The publication status of the course tells whether or not students have access to that course. Um, so kind of uh, staying in that um, track of uh, we are you, we are a new instructor who is getting a new course that they're teaching and have not logged into Canvas to set anything up before. We will look down here under unpublished courses to find that course, for example. Um, if you would like to follow along on your end, that is definitely something you can do. Um, uh, 
I just have to just search this for that. Uh, no, yeah, if you'd like to follow along on your end, um, you can definitely get your uh, Canvas accounts pulled up on your end and pull up one of your courses. And we can kind of walk through some of these steps as well. Um, and I'll mention when to and not to click save if you have or have not set things up or completely set things up and you want to come back and do them later, things like that. Um, the vast, vast, vast majority of things within Canvas, nothing is ever locked in. Um, you can always come back and edit things. If you can't edit things, reach out to us and we can unlock them so you can edit them, um, which will be a very, very small number of things that will be locked. Um, but yeah, I will I will try to do my best to uh, mention which things we should be locking in and which not. But again, all things are um, uh, reversible or recoverable, I should say. Um, so let's see, which of the courses was I using? So this is my full course. And then this is my empty course. Yes, perfect. Okay, awesome. So uh, once we select our unpublished course that we are going to be teaching this upcoming semester, um, you will see that there are, again, not a lot of things going on. We see our course navigation menu over here. We see our global navigation menu over here. And then we see a lot of other stuff over here. Um, so let's see. To start, actually, I think we will... Hmm, sorry, I always go back and forth which one, which one of these I should start with. Um, Let's start with going through the course navigation menu real quick, and then we'll get to some of the other stuff within the course. Um, so like I mentioned earlier, again, this is the course navigation menu. These are going to be course specific items that are specifically within the course. So when you create discussions within a certain course, this course being called Schiffman Test, uh, when you create a discussion in Schiffman Test, it will only show in this course. When you create a assignment, an announcement, uh, a quiz, things like that, it will stay within just this course. However, we can move those items between courses. Uh, we can import and export content, uh, copy them between courses, things like that. Um, and we'll get to that a little bit once we get into the settings menu. Um, so again, first we will start on the home page. Um, there is some differential as to what will be set on your home page or what you can set for your home page. Uh, and to do that, we'll actually look over here in the uh, on the right hand side of the page where we have some of these gray buttons. Um, up at the top, we have the student view tool. Uh, we'll get to that a little bit once we get into one of my pre-built courses so we can see how it works a little bit. But long story short, it shows you the course from the view of a hypothetical student. Um, that meaning uh, it is not an actual live student in the course. So the student view tool does have some limitations where it won't show everything a real student would see in your course. Um, so that is something we'll, again, we'll get to in a little bit more. Uh, so the course status, again, that is just unpublished or published, whether or not the course is accessible to students that are enrolled in it. Um, when students are enrolled in an unpublished course, um, they won't have access to the course, but they will be able to see on their courses menu. Um, they will be able to see that that is listed under unpublished courses. So you remember on our dashboard, we had published and unpublished. Um, they won't see it right there, but then they're on all in on their all courses page. Ooh. Um, they will be able to see a list of again published and unpublished uh, courses with future courses where it will show their unpublished courses that you are still building um, for those ANC level students. Um, so the course status again. Um, this is something uh, we don't need to publish right away if you're following along on your end, um, but the publish icon, when you're ready to make your class accessible to students, we will select this publish option. And you will see here, it will prompt us if we haven't already set a home page, it will tell us to basically set a home page. For now, we'll just click syllabus to select that for now. And you'll see once we choose update course home course homepage, we'll see the course status shows as published. This means it is accessible to students. They can see content in the course that has been published for student view. So in addition to the course as a whole having a publication status, content within the course will also have a publication status. So if we hop over into my built course here real quick, and we go into this assignments menu, You'll see here all of the assignments over on the right hand side have a little green circle, either light or dark green. We'll get to that in a little bit as well. Um, either light or dark green over here. Um, and then we also have this little gray circle with a line through it here. This just denotes whether each specific item has been published. So all of these have been published for student view, while Test Credo 1.3 is unpublished and students cannot see this yet. Um, so this is very useful for if you are still building something, a final exam, um, something you do not want students to see yet. Um, you can leave unpublished until you are ready for them to see it or get into that quiz or things like that. And there are also access dates that we'll get into in a little bit here as well. So going back into our our empty course here. Um, the publication status, again, this is again for the entire course here. So going down through some of these options we have here on the home page, um, I mentioned earlier about copying content between courses. Import existing content is going to be the tool that we will use for that. We also have access to that through the settings menu where we'll talk a little bit more, more about that in a bit. 
So one of the other options over here we have is import from commons. Um, we'll just go over this real quick, um, but long story short, commons is kind of a repository for shared course material. Um, so first we will not only see uh, material from other American University instructors, but if we remove the filter for American University dash DC, we will see all of the content that has been shared publicly by any instructor that uses Canvas globally. Um, so say you teach math. We can search math and you will see um, MAT, I don't think these are even American University. Yeah, these are just kind of global. Any instructor who has uploaded any class that has math searchable as one of its uh, search engine optimization tags will show up in this list. You can go into the courses, kind of take a look at the content, import some of it. If you like, use it. If not, delete it again. Nothing that you import will be you know, like glued to your course or stuck there or anything. Um, so you can always import content, take a look at it, see if you like it, and then delete it if you're not going to be using it. Um, uh, user, uh, this. it is global content uploaded by anyone. Um, so that is just one thing to keep in mind. Um, double check the content that you're going to be importing because it is coming from unverified sources. Not that it should be any sort of... Uh, inappropriate material or anything like that. It is pretty frequently scanned for anything like that, as well as having an automated tool that checks for any sort of spam that is uploaded. But it does seem to be one of the most more common places um, where some of those things did pop up when I used to work at Kim's, specifically being um, illegal movie streaming website links. We'll not mention whether or not they work very well or not. But that's what seems to show up here a lot. You'll download a course and it'll just be pages and pages, assignments, discussions, quizzes of just links to a movie streaming website, which may or may not work. Um, so again, that is just commons. Uh, if you're looking for generic content, I guess, um, uh, it, it can be a bit hit or miss. I'll warn, I'll, I'll warn with that. Uh, this third option here is going to be choose home page. Um, this is what we saw when we were publishing the course. It prompted us that we did need to select a home page or a landing page, that is, where students will first um, reach within the course once they select that course from their Canvas dashboard. Um, so if we click on this, we'll see those options again. Um, and we can access most of them right now. Um, so you'll see here, select which option you like to display on the homepage. This is what pops up for students. Uh, also, you as the instructor, when you first access the course, any user who's enrolled in the course, they click on the course on the dashboard, they will be taken to the homepage that you have set. Uh, the course activity stream is going to be a, uh, um, a, a user unique tool that will show each user individually what is um, uh, coming up next within their course. So say, for example, students have a weekly assignment, week one, week two, week three, um, those will show up in the course activity stream as students need to complete them. However, when a student does complete it, it will drop off of their respective, their, uh, their unique course activity stream just for them, and it will still show for others who have not completed the assignment. Um, so this is very great for if you have a lot of daily or weekly assignments in your course and you want students to keep up to date with those. If students tend to fall behind or forget about them or things like that, the course activity stream is going to be a fantastic option for that. Uh, so pages front page. Um, the pages tool is essentially we have assignments, we have discussions, we have quizzes, those all function exactly how you would assume. You submit something, uh, a file to an assignment, something like that, one thing or multiple things to an assignment. Discussion is uh, posting comments, that kind of thing. Quizzes, you have multiple questions. It can be one question, whatever. But assignments, discussions, quizzes are all pretty self-explanatory. There's some sort of submission that is going to them. Pages, however, if you just want to put up content, um, if you just have a place that you want to put readings or extra information, extra readings, um, outside of class uh, events or things like that. Uh, you can create a page in your course. It just gives you a big text box with all the same editing tools. We'll get to those in a minute. Um, you get just a big text box and you can just put whatever you want in there. Um, so if you would like to create your own homepage, essentially, your name, your information, a couple links, uh, links to the, the e-textbook, things like that, um, creating a page for your front page um, may be the best choice for you. Um, the only thing to remember there is we just have to set the front page on the pages page and then come back to the home page here, and then we will be able to select this option for pages front page. And we'll get to that when we get to the pages page in a minute. Pages page. Uh, course modules page. So course modules page. Modules are essentially a uh, somewhat of a functional table of contents. So like I mentioned, we have assignments, discussions, quizzes. They all have their own individual menu over here that we'll get to in a minute. Uh, and the modules page is where we can add all of those together. So rather than just having on the assignments page where we have a group of writing assignments, uh, weekly assignments, and participation assignments. 
on the modules page, we can um, we can break that down week by week, chapter by chapter, day by day. You can create a separate module for each whatever means of grouping you would like to use within your course. And you can, like I said, build a functional table of contents. Week one, you can have reading number one, and that can be a page. Then you can have reading assignment number one, and that's an assignment. Then reading quiz number one, and that's a quiz. You can have all those different items within one grouped group, for lack of a better term, uh, one grouped section on the modules page, and you create one of those for each course subdivision, let's call it that, uh, that you have within your course. Um, the benefit of the uh, uh, modules page um, is it just gives you a little bit more customization. Um, similar to the course activity stream where it will show all of the items for that specific user, the course modules page is best for showing students all that you want them to see. So all the items that are, I don't know, whatever, on the, on the course uh, table of contents, uh, so to speak, um, will be on that course modules page. Assignments list is just going to be the assignments page. Um, so where assignments are listed, all the graded assignments in the course, that is what will show on the home page. They won't drop off as students complete them. It will just show them all of the assignments all at once. And last but not least is the syllabus page. Um, that is just a static page where you can upload your syllabus or copy and paste it into a text box. So it is just a dedicated page where the syllabus is shown. This is really great for um, having no um, uh, gray area in which students can uh, maybe claim that they didn't see the syllabus or information on the syllabus. Uh, setting the syllabus page at the home page um, means they see the syllabus every time they come into the course. Um, there are very few specific ways they can get into the course without seeing that syllabus page, but 99 times out of 100, when they're coming into the course, they're going through their dashboard, they're clicking on the course, and it's going to take them to the home page, which if it's set to be the course syllabus, will show them the syllabus, and there are no excuses. Um, so that was the third option for choose homepage. Again, we just have to choose one before we publish the course, and it will prompt us to do that when we publish the course if it hasn't already been set. Uh, so view course stream, as I mentioned, uh, the course activity stream that is individual for each user, you can also kind of uh, view a, a, a form of that in a way. Essentially, it is the... Um, uh, the content that you have upcoming still, so things you need to grade, things like that. It is useful, but um, it can be a little bit confusing sometimes uh, because once you grade things, um, they can be finished grading, but you are still working on them. So like if you have entered a grade for everyone, but we're still working on comments, it'll drop off from there. So it can just be kind of confusing if you're uh, most accustomed to using this tool. Um, and also sometimes it can, it can occasionally miss things very, very rarely, but occasionally. And then it can kind of obviously also make things a bit confusing. Uh, course stream new announcement. If you just want to create a new announcement within your course, rather than going through the announcements menu, uh, we can just click on that button right over there. Uh, new analytics and new analytics are two very similar versions of very similar but slightly different tools that Canvas has. Um, we will just completely leave that out because it's its own can of worms. If you have any questions, reach out to us and we can always help you with that. Um, course statistics, as it sounds, is going to be statistics relating to the course regarding assignments that you have created, uh, student participation, things like that. Uh, again, we won't go into that one because there isn't too much, and it's its own can of worms as well. So again, um, this is from the home page. We have these items over here on the right-hand side, and then we have our course navigation page over here. Um, I actually want to start down at the bottom since I've kind of already touched on a couple of these, what they do generally, what this menu is. Settings down at the bottom here, and one thing to also keep in mind, um, this bar over here, um, we are able to control which of these items show on this menu. There's quite a huge list of them. We'll get to in just a moment. Um, so if you're not seeing settings over here, if it just goes all the way down and you're seeing just like discussions last, um, you can scroll through it. It's kind of hard to see because uh, this one isn't long enough to scroll through. But if you place your cursor over this menu and scroll up and down, you kind of see the where this the, the little tag kind of scrolls up and down. You can scroll down to the bottom here and access that settings option. Um, if you're not seeing it right away. Um, so again, when we get to the settings page here, not too much going on, first of all, here. Just again, our general basic details. Most of these things are going to be set by us when your course is created um, with us in the registrar before it's sent over here to Canvas and accessible by you. So most of these things, you won't be changing any of them. Um, what 
usually is going to be the things that most instructors tend to use are down here at the bottom. Um, these are kind of, again, course settings that are overarching to the course and specific tools. Um, so letting students attach files to discussions if you want them to share files and discussions for whatever reason, hiding totals in student grade summary. So if you want to hide the total grade as well as any subtotals while you're working on tweaking grade weighting or things like that. So students aren't freaking out at why their grade is 4%, but you're just working on weighting. Um, you can hide those students' grades, those student grades temporarily and then reshow them later. Um, so down here is going to be just a lot of our generic settings. If we go up here to the top sections, um, as I mentioned, when we were in the student photo roster, every course um, by default has its own section. Um, so if you have a cross-listed course or a merged course, like a 400, 600 graduate undergraduate course, um, you would most likely over here see those sections listed. So, you know, bio 426, section 001, and bio 626, section 001. Um, that just denotes that there are two groups essentially, of students that have been added to your course for two separate courses, essentially, but they are using the same material that is in your course. Again, most commonly, that is for dual enrollment undergraduate graduates, so you'll have a 400 and a 600 section in your course. Uh, so navigation, I mentioned earlier um, that you can scroll up and down through this bar. Um, so you can see here, navigation tab is just where we edit this course navigation menu. This is where we can edit the items that are shown in here. So you can see we have a top group here and then a bottom group. Uh, as we drag things from the bottom group up to the top group, uh, let's go with grades. That's a good one. We should have assignments, things like that. Um, these will be activated within the course for student view. Uh, one thing to keep in mind under some of these, you will see uh, page disabled won't appear in navigation. And on others, you know, let me pull down grades. It will say this page uh, cannot be disabled, only hidden. Um, the differentiation between those two is that uh, obviously, um, students see the access to their grades page. So it's not something you can entirely hide, but rather it's something that won't show until there is content for students. So you'll see for other things such as, let's go with modules. Um, page disabled will direct to course homepage. Um, so things like this, uh, again, since there are nothing in the modules page, it won't show that modules page. Um, so if it is disabled, students will just go to the homepage if they have a link to the modules page or something um, versus, uh, Bright Wave course materials. This is an external tool um, that is, uh, you know, just attaching to some other tool. You can see Honor Lock, Macmillan Learning, Labster. These are external tools, Cengage, Pearson, um, external companies that have a Canvas tool where they can link their system to Canvas, things like that. Um, these are the ones that you can disable and students will not see. But again, most of the, you know, Canvas, uh, uh, Canvas inherent functions, in-house functions, I guess we can call them. Uh, those can be disabled, but only if there is no content in them for students to see, things like that. Um, but again, this is where we change the order of these items. Uh, you know, if you want grades up at the top so students see that first and assignments. We can drag those up to the top, scroll to the bottom and hit save. And we'll see when the page updates, we see our uh, items that are dragged up to the top essentially. Um, so you can see the navigation tab is where we make those changes. Um, simple search is just, again, just a, a separate tool, an admin tool that you most likely won't see on your end, um, but just hovers and stays at the top under home there for me. Uh, apps tool, as I mentioned a moment ago, some of the external tools, McGraw, Hill, Pearson, Cengage, um, Yellowdig, Gruzal, all of those external kind of uh, third-party tools that you use in conjunction with Canvas to teach your course for content, for tools, for um, monitoring, uh, Respondus Lockdown Browser, things like that. Uh, those are all going to be found under the apps page. Um, so there are quite a few apps that we saw here that have already been added at the American University level. To see those from the apps tab, we'll just click on view app configurations up here and we can see um, where we have all of the full apps that are listed. Again, we can go into those in more detail later. Um, uh, feature options, same thing at the bottom of the uh, user settings. These are just kind of some extra tools here and integrations very similar to apps is just going to be um, external tools that have been added to Canvas. Um, so real quick here, we'll get into the uh, actual meat and potatoes of the course. Uh, Rupert Collins does, I don't know what that's doing here, so we'll delete that guy. Um, just so you can see, when we first come into your uh, assignments page, we will just see assignments. And this gray bar here is a group header. So within the assignments page, you can create groups. 
to further subdivide the assignments. And then the assignments themselves are the actual items that you're going to be creating. Um, so we will, we'll have, we'll, we will have an assignment group here by default that all added assignments will be added to. And later we can come back and add more reorganize the assignments there. And this is actually where we'll turn on the waiting for grades. So you can see here we have assignment groups wait. Um, this is where we will add, um, you know, if we want uh, assignments worth 50%, quizzes worth 20%, and whatever uh, other assignments worth 10%, this is where we will set that waiting. So we will click on the blue plus assignment button over here, and we will get what should be soon a very familiar page. Um, that being the blank name, assignment name, discussion name, quiz name, page name at the top, and then a large text box here in the middle. We'll always see this text box. It will always have these same tools above it. And then what will differ from tool to tool, assignments, discussions, quizzes, will be the details we have down here at the bottom, the different options we have to set up, to set up different functions, either create questions, allow students to submit a document, a file, something like that, or set up the you know uh, details for the discussion, whatever we're doing here. Um, so up at the top, we will call this assignment one. You can see I've made a couple assignment ones in my day. For this assignment, you'll submit a four page paper. That's it, just a four page paper. Um, so these are the details. This is both the title and the details that the student will see when they navigate to this assignment to complete it. Um, so this is where you want to include all the information. This covers chapter four, five, and six in our book on the whatever, in whatever place I want you to submit this. Remember this from last class to do this. Um, we have all of our tools up here. Um, all of our formatting tools here should look very similar. Uh, where things do get a little bit different is over here. Uh, this chain icon is going to be linking. If you're going to do a, set up an external link, a hyperlink to a Washington Post article, we'll select external link here. We can give it a title of uh, August 14th, uh, Washington Post front page or whatever. And then this is where we put the link. And then we also have the option for course links. So if you would like to link to other material within your course, you can select course links. And here you can see if I had other assignments created, I could link to the past assignment and say, remember from your last assignment, use your submission from that and make your, make your edits, make your annotations and resubmit it to this assignment, things like that. Um, moving to the right, we have a, a, a image tool. So if we need to upload an image, um, we just have a regular upload tool and we can you know, view the files on your course and upload an image. And then we also have course images and user images. Uh, so again, course images will be stored in the course files section and user images will be stored in your user files section. Likewise, we have media and documents, upload course documents and user documents. Uh, where things start to change a little more is this little rainbow star. Um, this will attach to your automatically to your Kaltura media space um, or Kaltura, <coughs> excuse me, your Kaltura media tool um, where you'll have any of your videos automatically stored. So if you're using Zoom to record any meetings within your course, um, and oh, record those meetings, they will automatically show up here in this menu. Um, so once they're here, you can post them to uh, assignments, discussions, uh, announcements, quizzes. You can just post them to your course, things like that. But long story short, we'll have a separate training for this as well. Long story short here, any recorded Zoom meetings will automatically be sent over to your Kaltura Media Center and saved for you to use in your courses or elsewhere from there. Um, this little plug here is going to be for plugins, any external tools, apps, anything like that, Pearson or Raw Hill that we mentioned earlier in the course settings menu, you can access these to attach them and attach an assignment from Canvas to McGraw Hill, wherever. Um, again, we have some more formatting tools, alignment, things like that, remove formatting. Um, this is just a little table tool, just drag and drop how many cells you would like in what direction for a table, and then just some more tools here. Getting down to the details here for assignments, where this will differ from creating a quiz, creating a discussion, things like that, is going to be these settings down here at the bottom. Points is going to be total points, the total value of the assignment. So out of 100 points, 50 points, 10 points, whatever. The assignment group, as I mentioned on the last page, we have different headers that we can create to subdivide the assignments within the course page or within the course assignments page. This is just going to allow us to delineate which group this assignment falls into automatically, but we can also re uh, realign them, remove them, reassociate them with different groups at any time as needed. 
Uh, display grade as, as it sounds, is just how the grade displays. Since all assignments within Canvas will, will still come down to a base of how many points they're out of for uh, grade calculation purposes, the display grade as option is just that, how the grade displays. It is displaying a student gets 43 out of 50 points, or is the student receiving, you know, an 86 percent? Um, is the student getting a letter grade? Uh, by default, it will be based off the AU um, uh, default grading scheme, um, but that can be edited in, in the course settings page. You can reach out to that, us if you have any questions about that. GPA scale, I don't think I've ever seen anyone grade anything on a GPA scale, so please let me know if you do, because I'm really curious to see what that application would look like. Um, and then the only two different ones are going to be incomplete, complete, and not graded. Uh, complete, incomplete is all or nothing. Either you completed it and you get all 50 points or whatever it's worth, or you did not complete it and you get zero points. There's nothing in between. It's all or nothing. And then the last one is not graded. It seems a little confusing and backwards to have it set as not graded, but still be worth 50 points. Um, so it's kind of more of a hypothetical, essentially. So this is really useful, uh, really useful. This can be useful for a practice quiz, something like that, where you want the students to know what they would have gotten on the quiz if it was real, but it's not. Um, that is immediately uh, uh, obfuscated by the fact that right beneath that, we have the option to not count this towards the final grade. So checking that box is kind of the same as not graded. It's not, the, the grade is not entered in towards the student's final grade. It's just kind of a hypothetical what if situation. They're both there. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> so submission type is very important. Submission type is going to be how the students are, are submitting what they're submitting and what form they're submitting. Um, to the uh, to the assignment. Uh, so in most cases, um, the option will be online. Online just means students are submitting to the assignment online on Canvas. And you can select as many of these options as you want, and students will be able to choose their option uh, that they would like to submit for. Text entry just gives students a big text box just like this to either type their submission, copy and paste it, upload a file, upload a document, upload a media file, whatever. So text entry gives students a, a, a bit more latitude, I guess. Uh, website URL, just a URL, media recordings, just a recording, student annotations, uh, you will upload something for students and they will upload a annotated version of it, kind of a, a, a an augmented version of the last option, which is file uploads, which is just students are uploading a file and you do have the ability to restrict files. Um, so if you only want students to submit uh, a, a, a doc file or a, uh, a doc file, and a .docx file, you can specify um, that they are only able to submit those files in that way, and it just has the kind of formatting down here. Um, so as we are wrapping up, uh, oh, real quick, submission attempts. Um, if students are allowed to submit multiple times, it will never overwrite any of their submissions. Um, it will always um, just kind of stack them up. And then once you grade them, you will just have the option to see all of them. So, you know, September 15th, uh, 427 submission, 429 submission, 438 submission. If students keep submitting, you'll just get, you'll just get a list of all of them and we can go back and see all of them at any time. Uh, limited, you know, they just get a certain number of times. Um, plagiarism review, if you just wanted to go through uh, uh, turnitin.com, you can just set it up for Turnitin. It is a truncated list of options that are available here um, for you. It is not the full list that, as compared to if you go to turnitin.com. Um, again, it's just kind of a shorter option for just a, a shortcut in a way. Uh, group assignment, we'll get to this later in a, a separate session. If you want to set up a group submission, it's very complicated um, and deserves its own session for that reason. Peer reviews, exact same thing. Moderated grading, same thing. Um, they're very complicated and they kind of take a bit of setup and specific application of your specific course. Um, but the most important one, right, is the clocked uh, tolls 250 is going to be the manage due dates and assignment option here. Uh, when we click on this, we'll get a little slide out menu of the assign to section. By default, every assignment is assigned to everyone within your course. Everyone who's enrolled at the course in the course as a student will have access to this assignment. Uh, the due date is the date after which submitting to this assignment will give students a little late stamp. It doesn't do anything by default unless you set up a late submission policy or unless you manually deduct points or anything like that. So really the important ones are going to be the available from and until date. Um, these will create a hard window within which after the available from date and before the available until date, students cannot submit outside of those dates. They can only submit within the window 
And then we also have this great add button down here. Um, so for example, a student is sick, they missed the class, but you want just them to be able to get in and submit their assignment. You can create an additional assign to section. We can select our section. It's just this one section in my course because there's whatever happened. Uh, if I had more students in my course, it would show my students listed by name. You can select that student and give them their own individually unique window within which they can take their quiz. And we can always add additional, um, but we just always want to remember we always have to keep it assigned to everyone. So those submissions and grades are all kept within Canvas. Um, so yes, we are getting to the end of our time. It always goes so much faster than I always think. Um, uh, we didn't get to quizzes and uh, discussions. There are going to be formulaically very similar to creating assignments. However, things will deviate a little bit once we create those individual questions and once we create the uh, the discussion topic and then replies to that, things like that. Um, uh, yes, that's all the kind of basics I wanted to cover. So real quick, while you have a little bit of time, are there any questions? Any questions? Um, right. Well, if anyone does have any questions that they uh, can't think of right now, I will drop our information in the chat one more time. Any of those who arrived after I posted it, just to make sure everyone sees it, because that is a fun complication of Zoom meetings. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, please reach out. Oh, there we go. Never mind. <laughs> awesome.